So a nuclear reactor essentially is a system of systems that ultimately turns heat uh, into a usable form of power, and in this case, electricity. There are a couple of types of nuclear reaction. Um, there's uh, fusion reaction, which probably um, space's most famous uh, nuclear reactor that operates via fusion is the sun. Um, we're not looking to replicate that. Uh, we're talking about uh, fission uh, here. So the basic principles of, of fission, a, um, a heavy atom, such as uranium-235, undergoes um, an interaction with a neutron. That neutron splits that U235 into two roughly equal daughter products, and more neutrons are released, um, and that energy creates heat. So the, 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 key, the key to this is uh, the, the neutrons that are released can then go on and interact with other uranium atoms and create a uh, a stable, continuous reaction. So, as you might imagine, for us, key is maintaining the neutron population within a reactor core, and that's how we throttle and control our nuclear reaction. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other key systems that we've got in a nuclear reactor here. So, the main, the main functions are, we create heat in a reactor core, we need to control that neutron population with reactor, reactivity control devices, we then need to remove the heat that that nuclear core has created um, via a heat transfer mechanism and we need to take that heat and we need to pass that to a secondary system that uses that heat and generates electricity. So there are a number of key enabling technologies that I'll talk about um, that we think at Rolls-Royce are key to the success of this. Before I get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we at Rolls-Royce go about designing such a reactor. So, as I've mentioned, there are some key systems that we need to develop and understand. There are a number of different combinations of potential technologies that can fulfil the role of those various different systems. At Rolls-Royce, through our 60-year heritage in designing nuclear reactors, we are fully, um, we, we design, justify, make, support in service and decommission uh, nuclear reactors. We have a full appreciation of everything that goes into um, everything that you need to deliver a nuclear reactor. At the moment, on our micro reactor project, we're very much in the concept design, assessment, and demonstration phase. So we're evaluating the different technologies that you can use to fulfil the various functions of the different subsystems of a nuclear reactor. We're evaluating those different technologies against each other um, and we're evaluating them against a number of critical system parameters that will ultimately enable us to make a judgement as to what the best, most optimum solution for a nuclear reactor is. So, some of the, some of the parameters that we'll assess against Clearly, the Rolls-Royce thing that is um, paramount to us is product safety. So that is always forced, first and foremost in everything that Rolls-Royce does, ensuring that our products are safe. Other such design considerations we'll have are around the weight of the product, the power output, the cost of the product, the lifetime of the product, many others. We're assessing all these key technologies and in that early work we've identified a few potential forerunners of what we think are really key enabling technologies that will make this um, micro reactor viable for space application. So starting in the core, encapsulated fuel technology we think is a key enabler for this kind of a product. Encapsulated fuel is Effectively, if you think of something about of a poppy seed size, a little kernel of uranium that's coated in a protective layer, that protective layer acts as the first barrier to fission product release. So for us, that creates a barrier to that fission product release. That coated structure is designed such that it can withstand any temperatures that it would see within the nuclear reactor in either normal operating conditions or in any postulated accident scenarios. 
This is a key enabling technology for us because if you think of a traditional civil reactor um, that doesn't use this kind of fuel technology, the amount of containment, concrete that's put around the reactor um, would be completely unviable for us to have a design that needed to incorporate that. Um, we just wouldn't get that uh, launched. Some other key enabling technologies that we think um, will work well for a space application is the heat removal method from the core. One such technique we're looking at uh, are heat pipes. And I've actually got some heat pipes, some very small heat pipes in my pocket here. So heat pipes, they're really cool. I really like them. You'll probably, if you don't know what they are already, you will have taken at least secondary benefit from them, from the cooling properties that they'll have on the motherboards of your home PCs or tablets. Um, these, these heat pipes, if I had a cup of tea here and I were to put this one, this one is not a heat pipe, although it looks very similar, this is just a normal copper rod. If I were to put this into a, a cup of tea, um, it would take quite some time before, before you would see the heat start transferring. If I put a heat pipe in to the cup of tea, it's almost in instantaneous. Likewise, if you transfer it into um, a cold cup of water. Um, there's also quite a weight difference between the, between the two, which obviously is advantageous for, for space. So, how, how does a heat pipe work? Um, put simply, you have the, the hot end, the evaporator end would be inserted into the reactor core. Um, inside of the heat pipe you have a working fluid and you have a wick structure that is around the internal circumference of the heat pipe. Think of that wick structure as a sponge. The heat from the core heats up the working fluid, that working fluid moves to the other end of the heat pipe, the cold end of the heat pipe, um, through pressure differential, and then the other end of the heat pipe is cooled. That working fluid at the colder end is then condensed, and the wick structure effectively sucks that fluid back to the hot end again. So it's a passive system, no moving parts, incredibly mechanical, mechanically reliable. Another key technology um, for space micro reactors, and again something that Rolls-Royce has a lot of uh, pedigree in, is a gas turbine. So one of the key enablers of a gas turbine is the power level we can extract from a, a micro reactor. Here at Rolls-Royce we have a lot of experience in a traditional gas turbine, so that's sucking in air, compressing that air, passing that air into a combustion chamber, igniting fuel, heating that air up, and then taking that compressed hot air and driving it through a turbine. We're proposing to do a similar thing with a uh, micro reactor power con conversion system, but instead of using combustion, we're using the, the heat from the reactor core to provide the heat into the working fluid. Obviously for space applications, it wouldn't be an air breathing system, it would be a closed uh, cycle, so hence why we need uh, some of the big radiators that, uh, that Gary talked about earlier in that initial, um, initial slide. Look at how you examine that fuel, to look at how you manufacture that fuel, to look at how you can take these tiny little poppy seeds of fuel and form them into a fuel compact that could be put into a reactor core. We're also looking at how you can recycle that fuel. Outside of the fuel, we're also looking at the core structure. We're looking at monolithic cores, so machined out of a single block of material um, for their enhanced mechanical properties and um, enhanced structural integrity properties. We're looking at how we can um, machine those and how we can interface some of the other key technologies with a, uh, a monolithic structure. So we're looking at how we can fit a heat pipe within a core such that we can take heat from the core and pass it through the heat pipe as I've described previously. I mentioned the key thing to a nuclear reactor is being able to control that reactivity and we're looking at different mechanisms for controlling that reactivity, reactor control drums. The way that we do that is by having a moderating material and a um, absorbing material that effectively enables you to uh, reflect more neutrons into the core 
increase the reaction, or if you switch it the other way around, absorb the neutrons and stop the reaction. We're looking at how we can join those different materials together in a control drum mechanism, and then we're looking at the control drum drive mechanism so that we can get the finest of tuning of that mechanism such that we can really throttle and um, control the reactivity of our core to the highest degrees of precision. We intend to work with our, some of our um, university technology centres to do some experimentalist investigation into uh, liquid metal heat pipes to look at their characteristics, their startup behaviour and to build our capability in testing this key functionally enabling technology. We're also looking at the ways that you take the heat from that heat pipe and pass that into another working fluid such that it could be used with the grain cycle part of the, um, the gas turbine part of the microreactor. So we're working with another of our academic collaborators to design heat exchangers, test those heat exchangers, and then validate our methods for the design of those heat exchangers. We want our heat exchangers to be small, compact, um, and we're going to be relying on some quite interesting design um, techniques and challenges to come around some of that. The next element we are working on is a, um, a, a demonstrator of our Brayton cycle. So as I said, Rolls-Royce has a long history in gas turbine technology. <coughs> we're working with our, our, our um, Rolls-Royce Bristol to develop a test rig for a closed Brayton cycle um, where we'll be simulating the heat from a nuclear reactor just with heaters, but it will be providing heat into a working fluid. That working fluid will be um, compressed and driven through a generator to generate representative electrical outputs. We're going to be inviting you back here at some point in the not too distant future towards the end of the year where a lot of this work will be complete and hopefully at that time this model will be replaced by a full-scale model as Gary mentioned about the size of a family car that demonstrates some of these key technologies. We'll also be handing you a tablet and you'll be able to come and have a look at the model. With the tablet we'll be able to hover that tablet over the different parts of the model and you'll be able to see video of our experimental work that's going on on heat pipes. You'll be able to move it further along and see the CFD simulations of the heat exchangers. You'll be able to move it further on to the power conversion unit and you'll be able to see the operation of our test rig at Bristol. Further to that, on the table next to it, we'll have some of the other components that I've mentioned that we've made, that we've tested. So there'll be fuel compacts, a small vial of inert representative fuel kernels. There'll be a monolithic core structure. There'll be a section of a monolithic core with a chest fitted heat pipe. There'll be a section of reflector material and there'll be reactor control drums that can be actuated by a control drive mechanism. We're really, really excited about this work. We're really, really excited about being part of this, about collaborating, about what it means for the UK, about what it means for the Midlands. We're really excited to share with you the work we've done today. We hope you are excited too. And I hope that many of you get to be part of it in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.